In an earlier video, we walked through the process of creating the Virtual Pet mobile application. We're going to use that as a starting point and extend our mobile application so that we can have multiple images of animals and matching sounds that the user can rotate through by touching the image. The way this will work is we'll actually upload some additional pictures and sounds, and then we'll go into the Blocks editor and use lists to create a list of different sounds and animals that the user can cycle through each time they interact with our image. So let's get started. The first step is, of course, downloading all of your images and sounds, and then we'll upload them to App Inventor. We'll have to do this one at a time. In this case, I don't necessarily want to overwrite the elephant image that I have here on the screen. So instead of going to pet image and changing the picture, I'm using the little media block down here at the bottom to upload each additional file. The naming here is important. Later when I reference these different files, I'm going to do it by name. So making sure that I've renamed the, each picture and sound file so that it's simple for me to retype without making mistakes will be really helpful later. So once these are all uh, uploaded, when my screen initializes, I'm going to create an initial list that has all the different image uh, names, file names, and then another list with all the sounds. Let's see. So under screen, I'm going to choose when the screen initializes. And this is where I'm going to set up all the different values inside my lists. I'm also going to need to create some variables. And that's where I'll store my list. So I'm going to have two. One for my virtual pet images and one for my virtual pet sounds. So the image or the uh, variable is almost like a box that you can put different content into. In this case, I'm creating two boxes. And inside of those boxes, I'm going to put an empty list. So when my application initializes, so starting for the first time, I want to take those lists and I want to add items to them. So let's start with sounds. So I went to variables and I pulled out a get block and said get pet images. Under list, you'll see there's lots of different ways that we can interact with lists. What I'd like to do is I'd like to add an item to an existing list. So if I use insert list item, I can insert something directly into the list. Uh, I could also use add items to list as another way. For me, in this case, I don't really care what order they appear as long as they match the images and the sounds. So I don't really necessarily need insert, which takes both the list, the index, or where in the list to put the new value, and the item being uh, added. So I'm going to use add items to list instead. Add items to list also has this nice little uh, cog up here in the, up in the corner, this gear, which allows me to customize this block. So I can drag over multiple items and change the, actually the way that the block works. So I just hovered over the gear, gave it a click, and then I can just drag these items out. So in this case, I'm going to add multiple items to my list. So I'm going to get the global pet images, and then I need to specify each item to add. If I go over to text, I can pull out a text field, and this is where I'm going to put the, the file name that we saw earlier. So elephant. Lion. Zebra.
and hyena. And then I'm going to move all that into when screen one initializes, grab the pet images list, and add these items. Now I'm going to want to do exactly the same thing for my sounds. You might have noticed I was using Control C and Control V to copy and paste these blocks to make it faster to create several of them at once. I can also right click and choose duplicate on one block or a whole group of blocks. So in this case, adding new uh, sounds to a list is going to look very similar to how I added the images. So I'm going to right click here, hit duplicate, and now I have a whole another set of um, the different items being added to lists. And I'll go through and change it to be the sound list. And I'll change each of these file names to the sound. So now I have two different lists, one that contains all my images, one that creates or contains all my sounds. There's one more variable I'm going to need, and that is which point am I in the list? So am I currently showing the elephant or the lion or the zebra? We mentioned earlier when you're adding items to a list, you can choose the index. The index means which item uh, from beginning to end, what number am I at? The first item, the second item, and so on. So let's create a new variable. Which I'll call pet index. And I'm going to set it to a number. And that's going to be the number that we want it to be at the very beginning when the application starts. Now you might recall when we uh, added these new images, we didn't change the fact that the elephant was showing first. It's on the screen when the page first starts up. Elephant is the first item in my list, so I'm going to set the pet index to 1. So each time the user clicks on the button, it's going to play the sound. What I'd also like to do is update the image uh, and the sound to have the next value that we have in the list. So to do that, I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to get pet index. And at the same time, I'm going to want to set the pet index to its new value. The difference between the old value and the new value is it will increment the index by one to move one item down in the list. So pet index, using the math plus block, adding one, then setting it back into my variable. So take the value, which starts off as one, add one to it, and put it back in. So it'll go from one to two, from two to three, from three to four, from four to five, except I don't have five items in my list. So something else I can do is I can go to math, and I can use the modulus operator, which will divide it by a number and return the remainder. Or, or I can use under control the if block, and I can say if pet index is above four, put it back down to one. In this case, I'll probably take that approach. This is the one I want. If I'll do a comparison, if the pet index is greater than four, which means I'm now outside the list bounds, then let's set the pet index back to one. So we get the pet index, we add one to it. If it's gotten too big, we reset it back to the beginning. So we're on the right start. Now we need to look into these lists and pull out the right picture or sound and update our image or our sound object. So if I go down here to pet image, all the different properties that are available, I can change right here through the blocks. So in this case, it's the picture that I want to modify. So we'll set the picture to the value in the list at that index. Let's see.
Here we are, select list item. Lots of options for modifying lists. In this case, I'm gonna select my pet images, and the index will be my global pet index variable. So the new picture will be taken from the pet images list, and will be the image that's at pet index. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for sounds. I'll go down to pet sound. I'm going to set the source. Select list item. The variable that I want to use is I'll be getting pet sounds. And the index, I'll be getting pet index. So now each time I click the button, it's going to play the current sound for whatever it is displaying on the screen at the time, which will start off being my elephant. Then it'll increase the index by one. The second one in my list is my lion. If the index has gotten too big, it'll reset it, which it won't happen initially. And then it'll update the picture and the source of the sound by taking that next item out of each of those lists, which will be the lion.jpg and the lion sound. So I'll see the lion, and the next time I touch the button, I'll hear it too. And then it will switch, of course, to the next index, which is the zebra. It will continue on until it gets to hyena, and then it resets back to elephant, and around and around it goes. My name is Lee Adcock. Thanks for coding with me.